welcome to Garden Ninja. Today I'm going to be showing you how to plant bare root bushes here in a raised bed. Now some friends of mine kindly got me this gift here from the Glutinous Gardener. Um, and what it comprises of are three bare root prunus spinosa, which are slow, slow berries to me and you, which you can make so gin out of. My friends also know that I love gin, so it's kind of a bit of a contrived present. Um, but I can't wait to get these planted up. So I thought I'd do a video to show you how you plant these three very small bare roots into a raised bed and how best to bring them on. So let's get cracking. So what you're going to need today is a bucket. And what I've done here is I've filled it full of rainwater from the rain butt. And what we're going to do is before we eagerly throw these plants in, which is probably what most people think, let's get them in. Um, because they're bare root, they're dormant, what that means is that the plant is kind of in a rest state, almost a state of stasis or sleep. And um, what's really important is to make sure that we kind of slowly wake them up. Um, and we do that by putting the bare roots in water and leaving them for maybe half an hour, an hour. And what will happen then is the roots will imbibe, which means they will take on the water and it will start to hydrate the plant and give it that feeling that spring's coming, which technically it is, and then wake the plants up. If you put them straight in, you do run the risk that they're going to struggle to imbibe to find that water quickly given the fact that the roots are so small and um, so what we're basically doing is giving them the best chance to get going. Rainwater is a great example of reusing um, earth's resources rather than tap water and um, it's also better for the plants as well. So what I'm going to do now is to unwrap these slow bushes here, these bare roots and put them in the water. So these have come in a hessian sack, which is quite nice. It also means that the roots can breathe, which is really important because all plants need air as well as water. So we're going to gently remove them from this bag. There we go. They should, yeah, be wrapped up. Here we go. So now that you can see this here, they've been wrapped up in this poly sort of cling film, polyphene. And carefully unwrap them. You can actually see on these they've started to cut, sort of wake up already with these tiny shoots but they're still technically dormant. So, there should be a small amount of soil on these. Yep, as you can see, but it's very dry. So if I were to prise these carefully apart, you can see that. So we've got one, two and three. There is a tag here with the name Prunus spinosa, which is the Latin name for the slow bush. It's also known as blackthorn. And one thing to bear in mind with blackthorn, slow, prunus spinosa, is that they do have thorns, and the, the clues in the name blackthorn, uh, they can be quite vicious, so you would want to be careful if you're putting these near maybe where children are playing, or uh, maybe people that um, will be brushing past them. So I'm putting them in this raised bed at the side of a house, where all my other fruit bushes are, um, and it'll also act as a bit of a deterrent if anyone tries to peek over or maybe decides to come and steal some fruit. So I'm going to pop these in here and then leave them for half an hour to imbibe that water and then come back. Okay, so it's been about an hour now since these have been in this bucket of water. So I think that's enough now to get them started. Um, so what I'm going to do is to carefully lift them out and put them on the side of this raised bed and then work out the spacing for where I'm going to plant them. So what I'm doing now is just carefully lifting these out of the water now that they've been in there for an hour. Just making sure to support the root ball. I'm just going to pop them on the side here. Being careful not to put them under too much stress. I'll save that water for later because I'll use it to fill the watering can and water them. And what I'm going to do now is to space them equally amongst this bed. So I've already worked out that it's big enough to hold them. And what I want to do is when they grow, is to grow them into almost like a, a screen, a hedge, which is why I'm planting them sort of closer together than if you wanted them as a bush that you could walk around. So I'm going to space them out and then using a trowel, dig in a hole and then put them out. Okay, so here I've got some peat-free compost, as always. Um, peat compost is really bad for the environment, given the amount of years it takes for it to be created in the wild. This is peat free, it's good organic matter and as I always say organic matter is great for any type of plant whether it's a mulch or when you're potting a plant in. And then I'm going to pop the prunus spinosa in, firm it down and give it good old water. So 
in the organic matter goes and be quite generous because it also helps it retain moisture. I'm put that, dig that in a little bit. Dig a hole big enough for my root ball, which is here, as you can see. And what I don't want to do is go too far above where the soil and the roots start because if I do, then the chances are that the actual stem may rot. So bear that in mind when you're placing it in. I'm just going to tease them apart a little bit. You can see the roots and even the root hairs, which are like the tiny follicles of the root. I'm going to take some care just to firm that down. Usually the back of your hand is a good indicator. If you don't want to damage the stem. Okay. I think that one's looking okay. What I will do is I'll cane and support these as they start to grow. And make sure that the wind doesn't whip them around too much. So there's one. So I'm going to do the other three. And then we'll come back and water them in. So I'm going to give the Puna Spinosa a good water in now and make sure that they're kept moist for the next couple of days, even probably weeks. Um, I've also put some mulch around the top to try and keep some of the moisture in whilst they settle and start to send out roots um, to find their own water supply. Now, I must say, these are a really good quality um, root board that I got from the Gluttonous Gardener as a gift. However, you're not going to be quitting your job in the city to become a micro slow gin brewery just yet. It's probably going to take a good year or two for these to send out enough vegetation to then go to fruit, which is what you want them to do. So it's a bit of a long wait. However, it'll be well worth it when you're picking your own slows, either making chutneys or your own slow gin with them. And really part of the, the fun of gardening isn't the immediate effect. It's sort of the nurture, bringing things on being satisfied that you can then make even just your own small bottle of slow gin. Thanks for watching, I'm Garden Ninja. If you've got any questions please visit my site at www.gardenninja.co.uk. Happy gardening!